oh you know what time it is time for five more books that i read in 2017. the first one we're going to start out with is the adventures of superhero girl by faith erin hicks this is a graphic novel of i think what started out as a web comic so it definitely has that serialized feel to it where each panel is kind of its own contained comic this just follows this girl who is kind of experiencing the normal trials and tribulations of early adulthood she needs to find a job to pay for her rent because her roommate is basically covering her rent uh, she is going to parties being really awkward trying to make friends and all of that is happening through the lens of the fact that she is a superhero and she has powers and she's trying to fight crime in a unknown city in Canada but it's you know it's Canada people are pretty nice and she fights a lot of ninjas this I really enjoyed it's super funny I know it doesn't seem like it would be relatable but the main character is extremely relatable yeah there were so many points while I read this that I just laughed out loud because it was just hilarious I really enjoyed it I really liked the art it was very colorful and it just fit the style of the comics really well I liked the the dotted backgrounds this was just a really quick fun read my biggest criticism of it is that it didn't really feel like a complete arc I think part of that is having to do with the fact like I said every panel is a bit contained but it also kind of felt like it was going somewhere in the end and I didn't really get closure on certain points and I didn't feel like there was an arc it kind of just like went up and then like drifted off in terms of the storytelling as a whole so I gave this three and a half stars in the end but I definitely do recommend it it was really really fun and entertaining to read and I hope that she writes more because there were things that I wanted to happen in this and they didn't happen it made me really frustrated um, but it was it was really fun next we're going to talk about another Cynthia Karahata book I really really liked her book Kira Kira so I wanted to pick up another one so I read The Thing About Luck this is another middle grade that follows a Japanese American family it follows this 12 year old girl there's kind of a, an, a family emergency in their extended family so her parents need to go back to japan for a while and so her grandparents are coming out of retirement to work the harvest season with this girl and her younger brother their family works with a crew that harvests wheat it's like a very high stakes job because all these people are pretty much getting their yearly income in a matter of months it's just about this girl having to help her grandparents who really are kind of too old to be working um, but they need to do this so that her family has money for the year. It's a very much about family and adolescence. I really liked it. It definitely had the same qualities that I really liked about Kira Kira, where I just feel like Cynthia Karahata is able to understand kids really well, and there were so many things that I just connected to. It was a, definitely a solid middle grade read. I really enjoyed it. I didn't like it quite as much as Kira Kira. It just didn't have that same emotional punch as that book did for me. It was still good and I gave it three and a half out of five stars. Next up is a poetry book. It's American Happiness by Jacqueline Allen Trimble. I'm happy to report I like this a lot more than the last poetry book, Milk and Honey, that I read. There was more variation in the writing but you could definitely still hear a solid voice. I really liked that this was a blend of universal themes as well as personal accounts and you just can tell that the poems were really from a personal perspective. I thought the writing was great, it was just all around a solid book. This has a ton of themes in it, it touches a lot on race, there's a lot of stuff about blackness in America, specifically the South, just the South in general, and religion, and Southern culture. She talks about her marriage, her parents, and uh, the death of her parents. It took me a really long time to get through. I wanted to sit down and read it all in one chunk, but I couldn't do it. It just was such a slow read for me. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it was a little frustrating at times. Overall, I thought this was 
fantastic. Let me just pull out some of the lines that I really liked. This is from Everybody in America Hate the South. America ought to say, thank you, Miss South. Thank you for being like Jesus and taking on the sins of the whole country. I thought that was great. Oh, another one I really liked from a poem called A Woman Explains the World to Her Children is Your comfort is built on someone's broken back, even if it's your own. This poem is called Gun Collector Shoots Unarmed Black College Student for Playing Music Too Loud. And this is like a real thing that happened in 2012. The whole poem is good, but the line that I really liked was, what did the man think when the boy took bullets as freely as they were given? We also have from a poem called Bridge Crossing, Salma 2015, the greatest use of line breaks I've ever seen because these three lines go, you stood on a bridge named for a man who loved you beneath his whip and foot. I gave it four out of five stars. It was a solid poetry collection, can recommend. Next up is The Hate You Gave by Angie Thomas. I finally got to this book. It is probably the most hyped book of this entire year, at least in my circle of book news. This, of course, is the Black Lives Matter inspired book following a 16 year old girl after she is the only witness to a white cop murdering her black friend. Got some heavy stuff in this book. Let's start out with some of my criticisms. First off, just from how hyped this book was for me, I was expecting the writing to be better. I didn't dislike the writing, but I wasn't ever impressed with it either. I thought it was very run-of-the-mill, young adult contemporary. The caliber of writing to me was just very average, and I was ex expecting more, but what can you do? I also struggled a bit to get into this book at the beginning. It just wasn't completely pulling me in. I would read a couple chapters and then I just wouldn't be interested to continue. I also struggled a lot to keep all the characters and their relationships to one another straight in my head. I feel like it was more confusing than it should have been. Maybe that was just me, but I don't know. I, it was something that I had trouble with, but this book got progressively better as it went along. The story really gained momentum. It just got a lot more compelling to me and I pretty much read the last half of it or maybe even the last three-fourths or so in one sitting. I really, really got invested in, and like really into it by the end of it. I really liked Star as a protagonist and I liked her parents and the family dynamics in this story. I really, really liked the emphasis on community. It wasn't just taking this incident as an isolated thing. It dives into a lot of gray area about racism. You get to see so many aspects of Star's life and you get to see the community that she's grown up in. She has grown up in basically the ghetto. Pretty much everyone is black and it talks a lot about uh, why so many people who are living in impoverished places like this end up getting into things like drug dealing and it's not like people want to do these things because they're bad people. It's the environment that they've grown up in doesn't allow for a lot of opportunities for them and it's so easy to fall into that trap. Star goes to basically an all-white school and I also really liked the relationships that were examined there with how she feels as part of a community of all black people and how differently she feels in a community with all white people. Yeah, there was just a lot going on in this book and I ended up really liking it. I gave it four out of five stars because like I said, I had issues with it in the beginning. I didn't think it was perfect, but it was definitely worth reading and it says so many fantastic things and yeah, there's just a lot to unpack and a lot to learn and I thought it was great. The last book I have to talk about is Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri. This is a collection of short stories. I've never read Jhumpa Lahiri before, so I figured this would be a good place to start. I liked this. I wouldn't say I loved it though. And I think that has more to do with me not exactly knowing what to do with short stories. A lot of the time I finish them and I'm like, I'm not quite sure what I was supposed to gain from that. And I kind of just wish I was reading a full novel where I could 
really, really dive into the characters and the plot. I'm just so used to reading full-length books that, I don't know. I'm not completely sold on short stories yet, but I still did like reading this. Pretty much all of the characters in this book are Indian, either living in India or America. I really liked seeing Jhumpa Lahiri's culture come across on the pages. I thought that the writing was really, really fantastic. She definitely is a very, very skilled writer. There's no denying that. I understand why it has all the acclaim that it does. She's definitely an author that I would try to read again, and I don't know, if you guys have more short story recommendations, I'd be interested. We'll see how I feel about them, but my favorite story was the one called Sexy, and my least favorite was probably A Real Derwan. I think overall these were pretty much on par with each other. I didn't absolutely love or absolutely hate any of them. If that was Interpreter of Melodies, I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars. Okay, so that's it. Bye!